What does it take to be saved? That's what we're going to find out today in Romans 10. Well, it's interesting. I keep reading more things and it keeps bringing ideas to my head. But basically, the idea is Paul laying out the problem, laying out the solution, and laying out two groups of people. When I was reading an article yesterday about the history of Romans, the suggestion was that perhaps the Roman Christians were at war with each other, that the Jewish Roman Christians and the non-Jewish Roman Christians were having some kind of conflict. And so Paul is trying to say, we have a common problem. We have a common solution. We're all together in all of this all the time. And so Paul keeps with this message here in Romans 10. So he says again that his heart desires that the, his people might be saved. He says that he bears witness that they have this zeal for God. Again, he was the Pharisee. He understood the desire to do every dot, to wash things in the exact way, to make sure that you're following Sabbath in the exact manner it is followed, and that you're eating meat in the exact way that it was supposed to be eaten, the exact things you were supposed to eat, and the exact way it was supposed to be killed. We, we cared about that. We had zeal for that. And that's why the Pharisees in general, like I said, were trying so hard to fight against Jesus because they're like, look at all these things we're doing. We are living our lives to this deep extent because this is what God wants. And Jesus is saying, no, this is not what God wants. And so he says they have the zeal. They have that zest. They have that excitement to do what God wanted. But unfortunately, they, he says, are ignorant of the righteousness of God and are seeking to establish their own righteousness. They want to prove that they are righteousness on their own acts. And instead of looking to God's righteousness, and in the end, it is Jesus who ends the law for righteousness purpose for everyone who believes. They didn't want necessarily the law to end. They wanted to be more perfect at it, you know, and that was primarily, I think, why they did not believe in Jesus, because he was not what they were expecting. And so he says that, you know, Moses wrote about righteousness the, with the basic information of the law, that you have to live these commandments or you'll die. But instead, that Moses wrote down the law. But what is important is that righteousness is based on faith, not on the law and not on the works. And he says, don't Ask the question in your heart, well, who's going to go to heaven? Who is Christ going to take up or bring down? You know, the goats and the, and the sheep, the wheat and the chaff. What's, how is that going to get separated out? And he's saying that, you know, the word, and it's near, he says, to your mouth and your heart, that because it's right there. And when we proclaim faith, we're confessing it with our mouth that Jesus is the Lord, that he saves us. And that we believe it in our hearts. Remember, Jesus said it himself, your hearts are not clean. That's what matters the most. Is not what a, they're not your plate is clean, your food is clean. What matters is what is in your heart. And he says that if you confess the words, believe it in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you're going to be saved. All of that together makes us justified. And he says that everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. That's ESV. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek. They're all the same. And God is putting blessings and richness and mercy on all of them. So for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And people who call on the name of the Lord, they get there because they have believed in their hearts. And how do they believe? Because they heard. So he's backing up the gospel all the way there. And how did they hear? Somebody preached the word to them. How did they hear this word preach? Because someone sent them. It's backed all the way up. We have to send people. We have to go. We have to preach the gospel. All these things so that a person can believe in their heart and then express their words with their mouth. And so in the end, he says, quote, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. That's how we get faith. And I liked how he ends then chapter 10. It says that God said about Israel, for all day long, I have held out my hands to the disobedient and contrary people. 
God's holding out his hands, hoping that we just reach out and grab it and take the offering of help, take the offering of the Spirit. That's what he's been wanting for this whole time. It reminds me, too, again, of when Peter was sinking and that hand comes down in the water and all Peter had to do was grab the hand and Jesus raised him into the boat. We are a disobedient and contrary people, too, whether we're Jewish or not Jewish. But instead, God is saying, I am holding my hand out to you. I am holding my heart out to you. I am saying my words to you. All these things I am doing for you so you come back. Well, this was a short chapter indeed. What I'm going to meditate on is the fact that God is constantly holding his hand out to all of us, to me too, that at times when we feel set apart, lonely, forgotten about, abandoned, our prayer didn't get heard, or our prayer that we wanted was answered, but then it didn't turn out how we wanted to, and we feel alone. God is always standing there holding out his hand. And what I'm going to pray about is that I understand always that Jesus did the work. He did all of the work, and he holds his hand out. And so we can reject the hand and go down into the drink, you know, like Peter could have had he not grabbed the hand and rejected it. But instead, God gives us the strength and the ability to grab his hand and take this precious gift. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that God is constantly reaching out his hand to you, to all of us, hoping that we stop being that disobedient and contrary people and instead grab the hand. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please subscribe and tell a friend. I appreciate you listening and being out there. And remember, you can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 